where the sands of the Sahara now shift and swirl, once stood a mighty forest. Stone Age men hunted and roamed its hills. Eons ago, by a strange caprice of nature, rain and vegetation slowly vanished. The ancient inhabitants were driven to seek a more favored land. Centuries later, some stragglers, climbing a desolate ridge, gazed down. There, before them, coursed a great river. On either side, there stretched grasses and reeds, a sign of life and hope. Into this, the Nile Valley, descended ancient man. There he developed the world's oldest and longest civilization. For hundreds of miles along this life stream of Egypt, a vanished people have left monuments to their skill and conquest of nature. On the east bank of the Nile is magnificent Luxor Temple. It was the heart of Thebes, once the mighty capital of Egypt. Luxor Temple is a virtual forest of graceful columns. The chief builder of the temple was Pharaoh Amenhotep III, nearly 3,500 years ago. These stone columns simulated bundles of papyrus stalks tied together. It is surmised that before the use of stone, the columns were made out of papyrus reeds that flourish along the Nile. We gaze at the main gateway or pylon of Luxor Temple. Before it, are the colossal statues and obelisk of the pharaoh who claims to be its builder. The famed Tutankhamun is thought to have constructed this portion of Luxor Temple. Haramib, the last king of the 19th dynasty, is credited with the erection of this double row of columns. colonnade marched the great ceremonial processions of the priesthood. For this temple was dedicated to the god Amun, who held sway for centuries. Restoration of the temple still continues. Workmen slowly restore the glory of what once was the most beautiful city of ancient Egypt. From out of the dust of the ages are reassembled the stones fashioned by the hands of men long forgotten. These are hieroglyphs, 
a picture language of the ancient Egyptians. This altar was erected by Constantine, Roman emperor, converted to Christianity in the fourth century. He forbade the worship of ancient gods and desecrated their temples. Amenhotep III built this splendid colonnaded court. These ancient colonnades are the forerunner of elements to be found in cathedral architecture. To the ancient Egyptians, the Nile River was a symbolic line between life and death. In the west, where the sun sank into the darkness of night, were erected the great tombs and mortuary temples. We prepare to cross to the mysterious land of the dead, the burial place of pharaohs, queens, and nobles. Mother Nile, once venerated as a goddess of fertility and abundance. Her magic touch converted arid lands into fields of verdure and plenty. In the distance, attired in somber black, is a funeral procession. As in ancient days, mourners gather on the West Bank to wail their lamentations. For centuries, the people of the little villages that cluster along the Nile have filled their earthen jars in the same manner as do these girls. The daily chore of providing household water is a pleasant social interlude for these youngsters. In the distant mountains are entombed those who once reigned over a mighty Egypt. The famed Colossi of Memnon. They are statues of Amenhotep III. They once stood 
before the portal of his mortuary temple, long since disappeared. Legend relates that in the remote past, at dawn, when the rising sun fell upon this colossus, a sound issued from it. There they stand, silent testimony to the past. Although great cities flourish in Egypt, the little villages retain picturesque customs reminiscent of a distant age. Quaint simplicity reigns. Here is the Egypt of yesterday. The potter is an important craftsman in every little community. He is the principal source of many household utensils. The slightest pressure of the fingers varies the form. Artistry and mechanics are deftly combined. Prices are not fixed. Bartering is the order of the day. Both buyer and seller enjoy the battle of wits which prevails with every purchase. The Valley of the Kings. Along this roadway marched the funeral processions of the ancient pharaohs. They were an admixture of solemnity and pageantry. The first step in the long journey to the next world. Behind the emblazoned sarcophagus came an entourage of priests, bearers of food and treasures and hundreds of mourners beating their breasts. Into the faces of these gnarled cliffs were fashioned the tombs of Egypt's renown. We look down upon the virtual heart of this Valley of the Dead, each entrance leading to a sepulchral chamber. To enter these tombs is like a passage from this life to an imagined world beyond. One of the tasks of each king was to select a place in these cliffs where his mummified remains were to be interred. The very shadow of death seems to hang like a pall over the area. The tomb of the renowned King Tut. Let us enter and view its splendor. Deep within, is this fourth and inner solid gold coffin of King Tutankhamun. And so, from the shadow world, we emerge again into the brilliant sunlight of Egypt. we retrace our steps along the road that led to eternity. <laughs> 